Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today we're going to be working with three reactive German Shepherds, one reactive Belgian Malinois. Justice is the first one. He's only coming for a few days, but he's become real reactive in public, and he's always been on a prong collar his whole entire life. So we have him on a flat collar, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the walk. We're going to start with the walk on a flat collar, not pulling on a flat collar. And then we will start to do some, we're going to put him in some situations to make him reactive and then control him. So that's what we're going to start off with first. So we'll start with the walk. You guys come with me. We'll start with the walk, okay? And the first thing you notice, he likes to put his head down and he likes to smell everything. As soon as we see it, we want to correct it. We don't want to wait until he's already excited and aroused, right? So I purposely have the leash dangling down on the ground so that you can see it's not tight. I'm trying to keep him on my left side. But he keeps going to the right. But it doesn't matter. The purpose of this exercise is just as not pulling on the leash. And walking on a loose leash and not a flat collar. Sorry, sorry, buddy. So that's the purpose of this exercise. Justice has been on a he's been on a prong collar his entire life, and now he's on a flat collar, and he's not pulling on this flat leash. Of course, Justice did do exercise yesterday with me, so this wasn't done overnight. Justice here, come here, down, down. Down. All right. Obedience commands on a walk is very important because it lets your dogs know that you're still instructing your dog. They're not on their own, right? Again, he is on a flat collar. He is not on a prong collar. Justice, come here. So. He's been walking on a prong collar his whole entire life. He's got here yesterday, and today he's on a flat collar. He is not on a prong collar. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this leash tight because if something pops out like a cat, he's gonna pull, he's gonna lunge, he's gonna get reactive. I'm gonna prepare for that and to correct him for that action. Nope. Come on. Wait. Flat collar, no reactivity, no pulling on leash. We're going to train this theory here, and then we'll test it somewhere else where there's a lot of distractions. First, your dog needs to understand this theory before you go test it somewhere else. No. Good boy. Wait. All right, so while we're out here, let's talk about down. Justice is on a mini educator. And the reason why this is better than the collar that you own, and I'm about to tell you why. Every other collar has a two or three second delay when you press the button and when it gives a signal to the dog. Sit. There's immediate. So the delay is two seconds. If you know anything about dog training, two seconds is the time frame you've got. So most people who create uh, training collars know they need that two seconds. Well, with the mini educator, there's no two second delay. This is immediate. The minute the time you press this and you give a command, the dog feels it, right? I'll show you real quick. I'm going to put him on vibrate. Watch his body language when I give him command. Justice, down. Immediately he turned. Down. Immediately when I give him the command, he's already ducking his head. All right. So now we're going to walk back. Come on. I guess that helps. Wait. 
walking on a post. Justice wants to walk on a post. I guess I'll do that. That's fine. I don't see how that's comfortable. And it's not comfortable. That's why when you teach your dog to do it, it looks cute, it's a trick. But no one's gonna do that on a walk, okay? There's no way I can walk all the way back with that dog between my legs. Things like that sound uh, unrealistic until you have to actually do it. And then you realize it's not a real thing. Again, no pulling. Flat collar, he's walking with me. Now, you may say, well, I know I can put him on a flat collar and he's not gonna pull me. Well, you haven't seen this dog when he sees cats. This dog is a monster, okay? He's a big monster. And he, and he has challenged people too. So, no, this is special. He's always been on a prong collar and he was on a prong collar that I recommended he be on, right? But as a dog trainer, you're always learning. And what I didn't know was there was a two second delay inside of those e-collars that, that we were buying for top dollar. I didn't know that the mini educator didn't have a two second delay. As a dog trainer, there's no way impossible you ever can be as fast as two second or a second and a half to give a dog a command. And it relates over to what you're telling them. This is fast. This is this is uh, faster than you could ever want. Okay, so that is why the dogs learn better on this. Also, this isn't a shock tool. I can tap it right now. I can give him a command, and he you won't even know I'm pressing the button. The button. Watch. Sit. Sit. His ears didn't pit back. All right, you can't tell I'm using it. He's not in pain. There's no, there's no function that's making him look like he's in pain. Um, now right there, I pressed it. If you see, he sat up, but you didn't hear him yell. But there isn't, there is not a delay when you give this, when you give this signal plus the command. There's no. So, we wanted to show you reactive justice. We didn't get the video of him trying to chase and kill the cats and him um, acting crazy and stuff. We didn't get any of that. But, we may get some. Because that was one incident. There's always two or three. And uh, there's no cats out here right now. So, we're not going to force cats to come out to be our dummies. But, if we have some, we'll go through it. So, that's walking a dog on a flat collar big reactive dog on a flat collar and anyone can do this all right I know the importance of seeing that video seems kind of minute but All right, so we're here with Sig. He's uh, gonna be doing walking on a loose leash on a flat collar, no prong, no pulling. We're gonna do the same exercise with Sig. Sig, sit. Sig, down. Same exercise with Sig as we did with the other dogs. And uh, then we will um, hit the stop sign and come back. So again, no prong, no pulling. Let's go, Sig. Loose leash. No, leave it. Come on. Wait. Good boy. Wait. Wait, Sig. Sig, wait. 
Good boy. No prong, flat collar, no pulling. Sig, wait. I'm walking real slow. Sig knows I'm an old, slow man, so he's trying to not uh, outrun me. Sig, wait. Again, when we say wait, we want the dog to check in with us. Sig, wait. Here. Good boy. Loose leash, no prong, no pulling. Wait. Sig's a Belgian Malinois. He's extremely reactive on leash sometimes, just like the other two dogs. So we do this exercise so that he can remain calm when we do take him in a public setting and we do take him around people. Sig, around people, we want him not pulling. We got the loose leash as, as talked about, okay? This is extremely important. Sig, here. Good boy. Sit. Down. Obedience command. Get sick back on track. He pulls a little too much. So. Sick. Wait. Training looks easy when it's done. Wait. May Sig check back in with me. Call his name. I'm gonna keep that pace as slow as possible. Once Sig starts pulling, then you've lost the battle. Wait. Hit the stop sign. Sig, come on. Wait. As soon as he starts to get out in front, I slow him down. Wait. Good boy. Loose leash, no prong, no pulling. Come on. Leave it. Sick. Good boy. Come on. Sig here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Come on. All right. Come on. Leave it. See how Sig keeps looking back at the neighbors? Every time he wants to, I'm keeping him from being reactive. Sig, here. Sit. Sit. Down. 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 I'm not turning him away from the neighbors. He's looking directly at him. Come on, Sig. Loose leash, no prong, no pulling. Wait. Slow down. This is the detailed stuff here. This is the detailed stuff that's important. That you need to make sure you're covering. Wait. Good boy. But I think it's a six is uh third time doing this. So he's still learning. It's a learning curve. Wait. Sig, onto the grass. Down. Down. Sig, down. He sees a cat. Down. He sees a cat. So, loose leash, no prong, no pulling. It's extremely important. Um, detail stuff that matters, uh, especially with reactive dogs. Not all dog trainers can do it. They have to use a prong collar to keep the dogs from being reactive. And I'm just showing you over and over again that 
Every dog I'm training is on a flat collar. They're not on a prong. Good boy, sit. Good boy. Down. And they're not pulling, okay? And they're seeing people and places and there's a cat under the truck. They're seeing all these things and they're not being reactive, all right? So we're gonna put Sig up and then we're gonna move on to the next dog. We're not doing you. Wait. Again. Wait, she checks back in. Down on the uh so she's on a flat collar, you can you can see that. We're not hiding saying she's on a flat collar, she's on a prong collar. She's actually on a flat collar. Knuckleheads. They've been pulling their owners around for a while. Wait. And uh, this is her third training session doing this. And uh, she's not pulling on the flat collar. All right. So normally I always do this training. Five, eight, six, ten dogs back to back. So I can show you that it's the training method. It has absolutely nothing to do with... Uh, me personally it's just a method that's being used wait most trainers will they'll fix one dog that's reactive on leash they'll post a bunch of videos of that one dog and to me sometimes i think it's luck you got real lucky you got one dog that's not reactive on leash and you use that as your marketing tool to get other reactive dogs and then you don't win but when you can do 10 dogs back to back in the same class that have the same actual issue then you can consider your, yourself a behavioral expert in fixing those problems, okay? But I understand, you gotta get more money, you gotta get more dogs, so it doesn't matter if, if you actually know how fixing that problem, it just matters that you get more dogs, all right? So again, this is dog number four, wait. I can call it to me. If she gets reactive, I can fix it. There's cars, there's peoples moving, plenty of things to be reactive about. Wait, stop, sit. Down. Good girl. Do an obedience command while we're on the walk, just like we did with the other ones. Come on. Reset her and continue the walk. Okay. No prong, no pulling, flat collar. Okay. Something, I think it's something I believe that you should. You should ask your, your dog trainer or whoever you're hiring, who's gonna hire you, if they're gonna be able to do this. This is like a testing of the type of company you're about to get. Can they do this? If they say the dog has to be on a prone collar, then that tells you they can't do this. That tells you a whole lot about who you're about to hire. If they can't do this, and they cannot stop the dog from pulling within, I'm gonna say 72 hours on a flat collar, wait. Then there's a lot of things they're not going to be able to do so that should be a measuring tool for you uh, if you are looking for a training and he's saying that we have to use a prong that he can't stop the dog pulling them and put them on a flat collar then that's going to be a, a red flag for me as far as a dog trainer i'm going to put her on her harness and see if we can walk her on her harness without pulling i think that's important coda wait let's check back in with me okay Extremely important. Check back in. Wait. Every dog wants to put their nose down, and I want their nose up. I guess stop that reactivity. Coda, wait. Here. Good girl. And yeah, you got to keep giving your dogs commands while you're on that walk. Uh, if not, they have no directions, and they're going to go off and do what they want to do. Like she's starting to go ahead. I borrow her back to me. All right. They're going to want to go ahead. You're going to have to bring them back to you. Coda, wait. Here. Coda, here. I'm gonna have to bring them back to you, okay? So if your if your dog trainer can teach that that hill and that walk, you're probably gonna get this. If they can't teach that, then you're not gonna get this, okay? This is where all this starts at. The hill on that walk here, right? Hill. They need to be able to teach that hill on the walk. If they can't. Your dog is never coming off that prong collar. Hill, you need that hill on the walk. Again, four dogs. It's our proof that it's not a gimmick. Here, 
and I, I know dog trainers are going to come for me for this. They haven't gotten here yet. They'll come on the page and say something hateful about me. I've been training dogs for a long time. You gotta understand, just because you just saw my video or you just learned about me, doesn't mean I haven't been around for a while. There's a big difference, right? So I've been doing this a long time. So that's why I can do this. That's why I can do dog back to back, back to back, back to back. I've trained a lot of dogs by myself for a long time, okay? So there's a system that's created that I have to come up with. So every dog graduates on time and every dog completes every task on time, okay? You'll learn that as a dog trainer once you get going that you don't have the time frame to uh, play games with people's dogs. You got to get it done, all right? And that method has to be uh, effective on every dog you train. Coda, here. Now we're going to walk over to a cat. Coda is extremely aggressive to cats. And uh, now that we don't have 100 people out here, we'll be able to manage her a lot better, okay? We'll do uh, justice probably later this week. So we have a cat here. We got Coda right here. Coda, sit. Come here. Sit. Come here. Sit. So we're going to have Coda around this cat right here. And we're going to be quick on this. We're going to watch her body language. We want to make sure that we're watching her. If she tries to go for the cat, that we can correct it really fast, okay? But I'm not between her and the cat. The, loose, the leash is loose. You can see it. She's doing extremely well. And she's not even engaged in trying to go for the cat, okay? So, again, dog training 101, focus on the details. Because the fact that she can be on this flat collar and not pull me makes it a whole lot of difference for her to be on this leash and not be reactive. Koda. All right. Good girl. Down. Down. Koda. Down. So that's how that translated over. By her not being aggressive on the leash, her, she's not being aggressive to this cat on the leash. Make sense? All right, guys. I'm Madison Bell. I hope you enjoy training. Y'all have a good one. Before we take Rocky out to do his walk, I want to do an exercise with him with healing and weight. So when I tell him to, he'll do it outside. I think he's going to get a treat. Fizz. Good boy. So when I tell him to do that command outside, he'll do it. So that was the purpose of, of doing this, this healing real quick, was just to um, heal. It's just a when I give that command, he's kind of in the mindset of when he was getting treats. Foos. He was getting treats, and he'll instantly recall that and uh, do that. So, a couple obedience commands down before we take that walk. Rocky's really reactive on leash. So, I want to get ahead of that before we get out there. So, when I start giving these commands, sit, sit. When I start giving these commands, he'll instantly think about this moment right here in time of the treats. Okay? So, we're going to take Rocky out on a flat collar, no prong, no pulling down. All right, you guys stay tuned. All right, so this is Rocky. He's also reactive on leash. Wait. Good boy. I'm going to turn it down. Got to find that working level. Rocky, come on. Do the same thing. Loose leash. Normally he's pulling. He's not on a prong. He's on a flat collar. Normally he's pulling and trying to get to whatever it is he wants to get to. And the elders can't control him. But if you see, he's on a flat collar. He's not on a prong collar. And he's walking on a nice hill on me. Loose leash. I can show you the leash is actually touching the ground. Okay. The leash is actually touching the ground. So he's actually making the walk pretty easy. Wait. If I say wait, it's going to slow down. Remember we talked about... I'm going to show you something when I got him started up. Rocky, foos. All right. That training I did in the yard before we came out, he still remembers it. Okay. 
so it's a loose leash I got my finger in there and he doesn't have any distractions right now but I don't want any distractions right now I need him to understand he can walk on a loose leash without being reactive before putting him into a, a bad situation so again Rocky year old German Shepherd puppy same deal walking on a flat walking on a loose leash extremely important he's not on a prong collar his walk is slowed down to the hill right directly behind beside me so again I promised three <clears throat> we'll show you three and all three are walking on a hill not pulling um, and uh, learning how to walk loosely with me so I think that's extremely important when you start talking about teaching that weight. As I wait, he looks back to check in with me and slow down. Okay. So, good job, Rocky. No treats right here. Because there aren't going to be any treats when you do this. Down to the stop sign and back. He starts to understand he can walk this hill without pulling. And not being on a prong. We'll make our turn around here. We'll go back. Videos extended because there are a lot of dogs. Leave it. Come on. His favorite pastime is smelling the grass. You gotta pull him to get him away from the grass. I used to command, leave it. Left it alone. Got back on track. Okay. Loose leash. Again. I got my finger through it. He's not on a prong collar, it's on a flat collar. He's not pulling, and I'm gonna tell you something. Rocky has so much reactivity in him when it comes to things, cats, people, dogs, right? And uh, it's been less than a week, and we're slowly doing that. We have to keep him in a mindset that's uh, not arouse or excitement. But once he gets to used to being in that type of mindset, we can start to kill that, uh, that high energy. Leave it, wait. So, loose leash, no prong, no pulling. We'll get uh, my daughter out in a minute, and she will walk him. And she's only she only weighs about two pounds. And uh, we'll maintain this this right here. So you'll see, it's not just me who's holding the leash, but it does matter who's holding the leash. If you are when you don't know, you don't know what you don't know, and when you don't know, you, you're just gonna make mistakes, right? And uh, when you think you know and you don't, that's when you're going to get other people hurt. So you got to be able to correct the small things first before you can move on to the big things. If, if the small things don't matter to you in dog training, then you don't, you don't need to worry about the big things. Because details matter. This is detail. This is important. If I can't walk in with me on a loose leash, but I want to get him a protection train, and I can't fix this, then I'm gonna have an extremely reactive dog, right? That I can't control. So I need to be able to control him on a loose leash. So when I work him in protection, I can control him in that too. And Rocky is going to be a protection dog. So this is extremely important. A lot of people are all over the map. They're teaching dogs how to bite and all that stuff. In this instance, yeah, that would be fine, but not with Rocky. His drive is super high. I want to work on a couple little things and then I'll go back to the protection. Because Rocky came for protection and introduction, so he already has that drive built up. So he, he's one of my puppies, so that was extremely easy, right? As Rocky starts to want to do his own thing, I can do this. Here, foos. And then here we are. Sit down. Easy peasy. Okay, so I opened the door, he was alerted to it, and it was my job as the owner of this dog to get him back on track. Not the person that's coming towards me, not the cat that's coming towards me, not the dog down the street. I'm only responsible for this dog, all right? A lot of people are worried about what's going on across the street, worry about your dog. If you worry about your dog, you'll be fine, right? Your dog is under control, their dog isn't. That's their fault, okay? So that's all we're worried about. Kayla, come on. Fuss. Down. Give me a pumpkin. Come on. I want you to walk him, and I'm going to walk beside you.
beside you and I don't want him pulling you, okay? If he tries to pull you, you say wait, okay? Come on. If he tries to pull you, you say wait. No. No. Yeah, he should be walking beside you, okay? So keep walking. Go. <laughs> He's trained on me. <laughs> That's why I was walking with you. Wait. When you get to the fence, turn around and come back. Right there, come back. Come on. Hey. Slow him down. There you go. Our pumpkin walk on the grass. After you get on the grass, take him on the grass. I want you to tell him, go ahead, walk on the grass, all the way on the grass. I want you to go, come on Kayla, come on to the yard. Tell him down. Tell him to sit. <laughs> 